Although some of the brush draw modes in the E-Panel do afford you the ability to taper as you apply pressure, this little icon right next to the radius parameter will allow you to enable tapering with greater control. So you click on Enable Tapering. You can also check Modulate Tapering with Pin Pressure. With tapering length, if you want short strokes, you want a lower value. If you want longer strokes, you need a larger value. But the real control here is in the curves. On this graph, the left side is the beginning of your brush stroke. The right side is the end. The topmost value is 100%. The bottommost value is 0%. click anywhere along the spline and we'll click again to create a second point. You can right click on a point to change its type. You have three to choose from, a standard spline, B spline, and a hard edge. So we'll right click to kind of cycle between them and then hit OK. and you can see it's pretty short. All right, so what I'll do, hold down the control key and I can just erase all of these. You could also use your eraser on stylus obviously, but I think holding down the control key is probably just a bit quicker. You can assign a hotkey to this panel so that you don't have to move your cursor away from your model or from your drawing and bring it up on demand with a hotkey. So I can choose default, just hit OK. So you definitely want to experiment with it. And once you have a brush the way you like, you can store it as a preset. In the little drop list toggle in the upper right corner, I'm going to uncheck show all presets so that only the ones for this workspace are visible. And to create a new one, I'm going to go back to the toggle and choose Add Preset. I'll go ahead and use one that I've previously created by simply clicking on it. The preset is going to store and display the tool, the ePanel Draw Mode, and also the Brush Alpha that you used. It will also store any settings you may have in your Brush Options panel, which is much like the Brush Dynamics panel in Photoshop. It will also store all the parameters in your toolbar. When I go to my tapering panel, you can see that it too was also stored in the preset. I'm going to turn it off temporarily for now. I'll bring my opacity down just a bit. In order to keep this video as brief as possible, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the playback and just add some comments here and there. I should also mention straight away that this is not intended to be a sketching tutorial per se, but rather a demonstration of 3D Coat's capabilities to be used as a viable sketching tool set, as well as going over some of the tools and workflows that you might typically utilize when using 3D Coat in this capacity. Hold down the shift key and I can smooth on the fly. And you have some tools for smudging if you need. You can also use pinch or expand if you like. And in this respect, it's very much like using the liquify tool inside Photoshop. Let's use pinch. I don't like that, so I'm going to undo a few times. Go back to our brush. We want some kind of exoskeleton type of shapes that are sort of a natural armor. I think I'm going to turn Steady Stroke on temporarily so I can get some straighter lines. 
I'll go ahead and turn that off and return to my pinch brush. Use the zero or the nine key to rotate my brush. Go back to my brush options panel. I can reset the rotation to zero to straighten it back up. So obviously my proportions are going to have to be readjusted here, but we can do that in the tweak room, no problem. Let's go ahead and do that now with the Select Transform tool active and a standard brush draw mode chosen. I'm just going to brush select an area that I want to scale or move. You can see it has a gradient selection. So switch to the move tool. Go back to the brush select. You can use the shift key to smooth your selection if you need. Also you can hold the control key to invert your selection so wherever you're brushing it's going to deselect. What I'm going to do now is adjust or remove some of the selected area and then rescale. Switch into the move tool. This is a lot like using the liquify tool inside Photoshop to make these types of edits or whenever you're using some of the mesh tools that Photoshop has. So use the shift key to kind of smooth the mesh itself when I'm in this particular tool. I'll retweak the proportions before I go back to the paint room.
I'm now going to create my own custom brush using curves just to create a very sharp fall off. And hit OK. You can now see the new thumbnail created for it. Switch to a different brush alpha just to darken in certain areas, add a little bit of shadow. Later on in the next video, we're actually going to do a little bit of normal map or image based sculpting on this model just to kind of accentuate the contours of the model and the extruded portions. That will give us some natural depth that we just cannot get from traditional 2D sketching and it will also give us a basis for which we can bake ambient occlusion as if it's true displacement and if we want we can even turn displacement on so that it literally does displace geometry in 3D space. Now you might be asking yourself at this point why would I even want to concern myself with displacing a 2D plane when I'm trying to create a 2D sketch. Well, the answer to that would be you can utilize displacement or normal map sculpting to help create better textures, better reflections, better shadows, as well as adding some natural depth to your sketch. So I'm going to start working in the eye region here. Let me switch to a rougher brush alpha for the inner eye. Maybe choose the color operations tool which basically has sub tools just like Photoshop you have burn brush, dodge, desaturate and things of that sort. Switch to the airbrush. wireframe is starting to get a little bit distracting at this point so I'm going to turn it off by hitting my hotkey toggle. I'm also going to go to the view menu under grid placement and turn off the XY plane. At this point I'm going to stop the video here and we'll pick up in the next one where we're going to continue sketching but include some image based sculpting and also some ambient occlusion baking. So stay tuned. We'll see you then.